Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back to the R300 Apple Transformer Saga. And just wanted to give you an update on some of the things that I've been looking at and trying to figure out the best path forward. Pulled off one of the Apple Transformers, looked inside. Here's what it looks like. It's actually a fairly decent size piece of iron. I don't know how thick the core is, like as far as, you know, this dimension. But in this dimension, it looks reasonably sized. But clearly, it's causing some issues with the frequency response and square waves. And so, I know people are saying, you know, that doesn't matter. That's beyond my hearing or whatever. But it can have an impact across the whole frequency zone. If you've got music or a signal that's going through the amp that hits that spike where it's resonating, as you saw when we had this hooked up and this hooked up, this transformer's drawing down current or whatever, going towards a short or whatever it's doing, was also putting a dip in this transformer's response. And, you know, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that when it's doing that, it's probably affecting other frequencies in the spectrum. Plus, it's putting a super load on the output tubes, which is not good either. And it's just not supposed to be doing that. And I know some of you folks that are just saying, oh, but I love the way this amp sounds. Honestly, I'm not sure why you're continuing to watch these videos. If you're convinced that I'm wrong and there's nothing wrong with this amp and that it sounds fantastic just like it is, then go listen to it. I'm not telling you not to watch my videos, of course, but it just, I'm a little baffled about that argument that what you're showing, the measurements don't matter, and it sounds great. Why are you saying this? Because I'm just reporting the facts about what I'm seeing, and this is a fact that there's an issue with the frequency response that's being caused by these output transformers. And so, looking at a solution, obviously these little 15-watt ed cores are probably going to be the cheapest solution. I haven't reached out to the guy, I think his name is Matt, at Musical Power Supplies. I'm going to shoot him an email, see what his thoughts are about this. Also talked to George Lentz at Tubes USA, who is the official importer of ISO Tango products. And their output transformers are some top shelf made in Japan units that I am sure sound really good. And I've been wanting to try some of those, so he sold me a set of both the 30 watt and the 20 watts that I'm waiting to get shipped from Japan. And I want to see how those perform in this circuit, both of them. The 30 watt ones are a single primary 3.5K designed for a 300B tube that's set up at normal operating point. Okay, that's key. The other one has a multi tap of 2.5K, 3.5, and 5K. So I can experiment with the different impedances and see what that does with the frequency response and the THD versus power. I also ordered a pair of these same little EdCore output transformers as 5K primary ones, which I've used in the past, but I want to see what 3.5K versus 5K does in this same circuit using the exact same transformer that doesn't have multi-taps. Because some people say that multi-taps hurt the performance of an output transformer, and they're not ideal. But then other people make multi-tap ones, so I'm not sure what the real truth is. We may dive into some of that. The other thing that I've done is I've been talking to the guys at Thermionic Labs. They did the KT120 monoblock output transformers that sound fantastic. So I've been talking to their engineers, Gave them the two operating points that are options on this. 
One is at 510, 512 volts at 80 milliamps, which is what the factory's running these at. And then also gave them the option of doing 520 volts at 70 milliamps, which is biasing the tubes at either 90% or 80%. And in my personal 300B amp, and it's kind of weird, I don't, I mean, maybe it's a quirk of the 300B tube, but when I tried biasing it hotter, which you saw on the KT120 and some of my other amps that I've worked on, biasing single ended amps hotter normally makes the power go up and the THD go down. On my personal 300B amp, when I lowered the value of the cathode resistor to bias the amp hotter, it didn't like it. The power stayed the same or maybe went down a little bit, but then the THD went up, which is not what I was expecting. But put it back like it was and just said to myself, you know what, these 300B tubes like being at about 80%. So that's going to be the target for the bias point if I use the Thermionic Labs transformers. And through their calculations at that bias point, and I agree, they were saying it looks like 4K is going to be ideal, which isn't a common, you know, output transformer impedance, but they said they could wind a pair. So we're in the final discussion about like where to set the milliamp gap and where to do the taps on the output, whether to do a single tap or whether to do, you know, 8 and 16 ohm or 4, 8 and 16 you know, and how we're going to do the global negative feedback or if we're going to even need it. We may not. If we get the right transformers in there and get the operating point the right place, we may be able to ditch the global negative feedback, which is kind of my goal. And so I'm starting to think as far as bang for your buck, these thermionic labs, again, may be the ticket. Now you can see you could bolt these down just like BAM. And there'd be some extra holes here and they will sit there and they're protected and you wouldn't have to do anything else. You could buy some covers to put over the top of these so it would match these more closely. They wouldn't be obviously this metallic blue color, but you know, it's pretty easy to find some black cans that are kind of this shape and size that would go over this. I'm planning on doing that with the Thermionic Labs ones because A, they paint theirs white and I don't think white output transformers would look good. And I think just an open frame one is going to allow us just to stick a can over the top of it and keep the similar kind of look to what it is. I've seen cans on eBay and on AliExpress for, you know, the 10 to $20 a piece range. So I want to try to find some after I get the measurements that'll fit over those transformers. And then I think we're going to go that route. May have to you know, re-drill these holes to match the new cans, but that's not a big deal and you won't see the holes anyway. So that's kind of the direction I think we're heading. Obviously, I believe as far as like the highest quality sound, these ISO Tango transformers are going to be the bomb. And they're already potted. The 30 watt one especially is about this same can size. So you don't have to do anything kind of gymnastics you just gonna have to you know drill some holes to match the pole pattern it's gonna have a plug that comes through the center like this that you just hook the wires up to and unfortunately I think they're nine hundred dollars for a pair and I'm pretty sure that's not including shipping so you're probably looking at close to a grand for some super high quality output transformers but you know if you're Upgrading to like Western Electric 300B tubes or spending money on some other really higher end 300B tubes, that's probably the route to go is just pony up and get some really nice output transformers. But again, until I test them, I don't know what they're going to do in this amp. And the main reason that I ponied up to buy some of those ISO Tango transformers is I want to do a video on those transformers versus the 25 watt ed core 5k ones that are in my personal 300 b amp and see what the power versus thd and then sonically listen and see what they too sound like and 
I'm hoping that they're going to be a nice upgrade to my personal amp. Hey, upgrades, right? So that's kind of where we're headed with this output transformer game. And I think having different ones that we can compare from this to this to the ISO Tango at the top range, then have this kind of middle range of thermionic labs and see how they compare to the almost twice as expensive ISO Tangos can kind of see what you're getting for the money you spent. I also want to measure like the DSR, measure the capacitance, you know, interleave capacitance or whatever that I'm just now learning about, something I wasn't really aware of. And it may be a new thing to test on transformers is what's the capacitance across the primary and how is that going to impact the reaction with the output tube and how that impacts the frequency response. Because we know there's like Miller capacitance and how those capacitance versus resistance do cause anomalies with frequencies. So, hey, trying to learn here about output transformers. This is kind of new stuff to me. I'm not an engineer on transformers. It's kind of mystical kind of thing anyway. Hear a lot of people talking about how, yeah, the only good transformers are, you know, new old stock ones from the 1950s, you know, the Aero Sound or whatever those were, and, you know, that kind of stuff, and the original Dyna ones. And so there must be something to some of that too. And so I guess this is my first really dive into playing around with different output transformers on the same amp. And comparing them and I think this is going to be a fun learning experience for all of us anyway I just wanted to give you an update and like I've said I've got two of these or 300s one of them I'm leaving stock other than having fixed the power supply issues I'm not touching anything else inside it and then I've got this other one that we're going to be changing the upper transformers on and that way I can a B listen to the two different R 300s you know, one with these transformers and one with the stock ones, so I can really be able to discern the improvement and what's different. And I know, you know, swapping amps still takes a minute, but it's not like, you know, the next day listening to it after you've done these big electrical changes and trying to discern, well, does that sound different or what's the difference? I'll be able to, you know, swap one amp for the other, listen to the same track of music and go, yeah that sounds cleaner, that has less distortion, or that's got more detail, that's got more bass, and then be able to actually tell what's going on. So I appreciate you folks being patient that sent me these amps. I know one of the guys is, I think it's his main amp, and he's a little antsy to get it back, but I promise I will be done with it before the end of the year. And then the other guys, whatever I find out, you know, we'll decide you know, what price point he wants to spend. I don't think either one of them were really interested in spending the $1,000 on the ISO Tangos, which is okay with me because I'll put them in my amp. So anyway, hope you're enjoying the channel. Hope you enjoyed this update. If you are, please subscribe. Over 10K subs now and growing, which is awesome. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters. Thanks for folks that regularly are making donations to my website. That helps me a lot. Be able to afford to go out and spend a thousand bucks on Transformers to be able to show you guys fresh content and we can all learn from this. And again, thanks to folks that lend me their amplifiers to be able to use as guinea pigs and also be able to showcase on the channel so we can all learn from this on how to get better sounding budget audio gear. And until the next video, have a nice day.